Greetings everyone, from Soulbound Studios, I'm Kaizen, Senior Community Producer, and I have with me a group of people who worked diligently on the PAX West demo. Um, over here we have Jason, designer, Miguel, also a designer, and Nino Vai, the executive producer here at Soulbound Studios. Uh, to my right is Nathan, one of the engineers on the team. Uh, we have Brandon, Dennis, and Matt with us as well from the art team. Uh, today we're going to be talking about jousting. Um, we promised a retrospective. Uh, we're going to talk about what went well, what we could improve, and sort of the next steps for Sobound Studios. Uh, Vi, why don't you tell us a little bit about what jousting was and how we came to the decision. We didn't know until fairly late that we were going to be able to have a booth at PAX West. Uh, there was a little bit of, of waiting and hemming and hawing. So when we found out that we would actually get a booth, we didn't have that long in order to complete a demo for it. We jammed this thing together in a very short period of time, so it took it took a lot of rock stars to put that together and put it together in the time that we had. But we wanted to show off what we had been working on for the last few months. The locomotion system has been coming along really well. It feels great just to run around in the world. Yeah, uh, we've been working on getting the first mount in the horse, and the animators in particular spent a long time making sure that the the gates feel right, that the movement feels right when you're on the horse, and that the connection between rider and mount is just feels great. And we came across jousting. And even though we didn't currently have jousting in the game, we've got most of the systems that would help us create that. It was part of the animation graph work that we've been doing. It was also, I think, a large part also uh, the architecture, uh, making sure we had all the mechanics in place for mounting and stuff. And we already had that before we decided to go into PAX. Uh, but I think PAX was a good uh, time to bring it all together. An MMO at a convention, they're really difficult to show. These are something that people are going to play for, you know, months or years at a time. The attention to how everything feels with the way that it moves, the fact that there is actual player skill involved in the jousting, and a variety of other things were indicative of the kind of experiences that people can have no matter what they're doing in Chronicles of Illyria, not just in jousting. I had multiple artists and producers come up to me and say, the lighting is amazing, the details in, in the trot and the gate, the details in uh, the reflection, like all, all of it was great. Um, so uh, Matt, Brandon, Dennis, uh, from the content perspective, uh, could you give us a little insight on like how you got to that level of quality uh, when we launched the, the jousting? You know, once we had the base down, uh, there were a lot of details that we added. Uh, Dennis, for one, added all the mud. That's what I think a lot of people were freaking out about. The mud flying off the hooves of the horse and all that really made him feel grounded. The particle effects and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We have a, a very strong content team. All these different disciplines able to execute on these different parts. I sort of make sure that they're all rallied and ready to rock and roll. Once, once I get my part of that job done, I step back and look at the product and see where those little details I can help add in. So I saw we're going to be running around in mud, so let's get some particles in there and make it, you know, splash. And... But there are other small details with the visceral feel that a lot of players talked about when we were at PAX. It's just how grounded it felt. And the, of course, the mud flying off the horse, which is one, but the camera and the way that it, it focused in, it sometimes made it more difficult to aim, but it did bring you into the moment. and as well as the camera shake while you're on the horse, made it more difficult to aim, but that's more realistic, and that was really what we were going for. Well, in regards to like, designing the experience, like what went well for, for the design team? Um, well, starting out with uh, a good foundation for the design, um, by basing it off of actual jousting, we were able to figure out pretty quickly, jousting one-to-one -one in game form is not very compelling. Uh, because it's too simplistic. It's, there's no strategy or, or tactics involved in, in jousting, so we... But a lot of form. It there's, it's only form. That's the thing. It's, it's only practice and form. And so we were able to say, okay, well, great. Well, then how do we, how do we make this uh, a system that players can grow in skill in doing and, and can actually have high-risk, high-reward decisions to make rather than just like, I will go forward and I will put my lands down like every other time I do. We actually went out and watched jousting yeah. to do some research and yeah. also talk to people who joust. Yeah, my, uh, my buddy Robert was a very valuable resource. We got so much good footage. We He answered a billion questions that oh, yeah, we I, was, had I was grilling him good. About he, he was, equipment. He knew his stuff. Uh, yeah. About the, you know, the horse control and what the challenge is. Because we are a player skill um, oriented game, we, 
Master Robert, you know, what are the skills actually necessary to joust? And he gave us a list of five skills. And we're like, okay, perfect. Where can we try and recreate those so that those are the actual skill challenges in the game? You know? So one of the things that he said that was pretty revealing, I think, was to even enter into a match as a jouster, it would take two years, and a year of that would just be writing. So I didn't end up feeling bad about uh, when players would walk up to the demo and they wouldn't immediately be good at it. Yeah, I think focusing on the uh, the core of aiming and positioning yeah. uh, was something people are familiar with enough that it wasn't like completely alien, but it, in our specific setting was just new enough that it was still difficult to master. Like people who were really experienced at like yeah. other games about positioning, I, I think could come right in and be like, yeah, that, that was the idea, right? Like skills that are accessible to most people, and most people can. Um, perceive depth <laughs> and have spatial awareness and so I was like oh, okay I can easily like attempt to solve these problems because they're not they're not requiring me to use skills that I don't just use as a human being normally um, and so that makes it more accessible more for rival games like hey how good are you at memorizing combos not good <laughs> ooh you're gonna have some trouble <laughs> there are actually a, a lot of layers uh, yeah. in the experience, and it was interesting to see the uh, the tournament players in particular because the first tactic was being able to hit the other person. Yeah, step number one. Step number one, hit the other person. And you know, even day one, we had people who were starting to get pretty good with yeah. aiming. They, they have learned enough to be good at that. And then it was really where you hit them that started mattering because it did actually matter yes. whether you hit them in the shield, whether it was a glancing blow in the head, in the chest. There's a meta that slowly started building itself. People are like, oh, maybe I, I fake them out, put my lance here, move it at the last second, hit yeah. them in the face. And then finally, I was so I was so thrilled. The last day, we had a, you know kind of a black knight appear who <laughs> made it into the final round, and ultimately, uh, during the practice round at the beginning, he would do something weird to like throw his opponent off, like move his camera to a different place, he would like move it under his horse while you could see was the horse's legs moving or something like that. He would reveal nothing in the practice round. And then he was min-maxing his score. You know, if he got a good hit off, he would actually try to avoid being hit in the, in the later rounds to see if that, you know, even though he was losing points for missing, the other person was losing points as well. And so he was taking like sort of the, the ungallant approach to winning, yeah. but he had found a way to, to take a gameplay style that he liked and put it in the game that we had. Yeah. He was learning and, and playing this system that, that we had put in Absolutely. place, yeah. whether we intended it he to be that way or not. He was using the tools that we gave him in an interesting way that we didn't encourage him to do. Like we didn't just lay out in front of him. Well, and I think that's the space the larger thing of what, what COE is all about, is, yeah. is exploring the world right. and, and learning it. And you know, mm -hmm. taking advantage of it. It worked out great. Although we it's did good, end up having uh, an issue at the last minute with the length of the lands. Yes. Which is kind of maybe a good point to start on on things that maybe could have gone a little bit better um, or misses that we had, some improvements that we can continue to make. Because there's definitely ways that we can improve this experience for how it fits into uh, Chronicle Valeria at large, not just the, the demo that people can experience at PAX. So with the Lance, it was, uh, we always knew we were gonna need a Lance, right? It's kind of hard to have jousting without a Lance. So everything else was pretty like, okay, we know what a Lance looks like. But the length was, was the peculiar thing because, you know, as you're riding down, you think you're gonna hit the guy, right? Because the Lance looks like it's gonna hit him and then you miss, right? And a lot of that has to do going back to that whole you know, perspective and not being able to see what you're hitting. And a lot of it came down to, well, you're just too far away and you weren't aiming over far enough um, because the lance wasn't long enough. And uh, as we came down towards the end, it, I think it did need to be lengthened a little bit, but we kind of had everything in such a way that it wasn't that big of a deal to lengthen it uh, to, to get it done. Yeah. So I think we could have even improved further if we moved the players in a little bit too. Yeah. I had them start closer in like a, in a more sure. optimal position. Uh, we started them in the middle, and some of the tips we gave beginner players were like immediately go into the middle, go all the way in, touch the tilt, just because it was easier to aim, and it was a little more uh, on par with what they expect the angle of impact to be. Uh, so that helped a lot of people. If we would have just started them in a little closer, I think we would have made a lot, of, a lot more approachable. What I consider one of the biggest problems is that we didn't do a good enough job teaching players how to play the game with the game. We had to very much hold the majority of players' hands, and for them to even hit each other once. Uh, 
because it just wasn't properly conveyed using the game itself. Here's how to play the game. And we could have eliminated a lot of pain points in the learning process, because it is a hard game and it's supposed to be somewhat of a challenge to get a hold of how to play it, but we just had to verbally tell everyone, hey, here's how you even yeah. get anywhere. Even get a starting point. Even, in, even in a starting process. point. Yeah. What I saw a lot of people do is they would try, fail, walk away. Because they was like, I don't even know how it went wrong. All I know is I failed at doing this, and because we didn't communicate properly, oh, here's what you, you could have done to improve. People are like, mm, I'm frustrated, and I'm confused. Like, a lot of people, especially in a PAX environment, where it's like there's tons of other games, and they're trying to look at them all, are not going to sit around. It's like, the moment they get frustrated and confused, they're like, not worth it, walking away. And, and you say that about communication, right? Yeah. And, and I think you, we probably all agree that, that our biggest... Uh, pain point was being able to communicate to to the player not just what to be done but in a, in a short time frame right yeah. you know we're at PAX and uh, these players these people walking by they've got maybe a minute two minutes five minutes right if they're really into it they'll stick around for you know three or four days yeah um, really into it. <laughs> but but you know it's, it's a big show and in people's uh, attention span is really short so we have to be able to deliver all of our information really quickly to people who probably have no clue who we are or what we're doing. That's one of the sort of uh, tricky parts with doing this because like we're developing an MMO, right, which is such a huge game. We sort of touched on it earlier that like you only have so much time to actually get that experience in. And so conveying to people, it's sort of like that route we have to take when we do, you know, conventions. is like you have to make the game slightly different than what the original intention would be because in a normal scenario, you'd be like, Oh, you want to joust? You just don't hop on a horse and joust. You'd first learn how like the world works, how combat works. Then you get your horse. You learn how to ride a horse. Then you learn how to use stuff on a horse. And it's one of those challenges that we'll just deal with when, whenever we do stuff like packs. We always have to temper the depth of the system with approachability, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't we shouldn't get in your way and stop you from doing Absolutely. what you want to do. Yeah. And that's part of the I think the problem that we ran into at packs a little bit was we kind of if we made a couple more tweaks we would have made it a lot more approachable, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's it'd be really great if all of the systems were that approachable. So then you could you could walk up to it Absolutely. and start doing. You wouldn't be great at it, maybe there'd be a lot of skill. You get wrecked people who have been playing longer than you, but uh, you could walk up and just start doing it right away, right? It shouldn't be like, oh, I have to be dedicated to being a jousting person if I want to try jousting, right? Yeah. Maybe they don't know what they want to do with their player's life yet, right? Uh, a very possible scenario. Uh, they Absolutely. get in and they're like, I want to try jousting. I want to try combat. I want to try blacksmithing, right? And so we should still, I, I think it's valuable uh, to take the lessons we learned from uh, orienting an experience to a, a five-minute walk-in and play. We can use those same lessons to, to build some of the, the mechanics that we want players to be able to jump into and try out. Well, I think visually we could have done a lot more too. Yeah. Um, the, the the charging of two people on a horse with long sticks and hitting each other is a pretty visceral event. Yeah. And we did a lot of work to make sure that that felt visceral during it, but the impact I think felt a little a little flatter than we would have liked. Yeah. It. The, the the impact moment, like the, it's all built up to that moment, and I, I do think that's the one spot that we can actually really grow on. Ultimately, I thought that we made a lot of considerations for for feedback, um, and it still wasn't enough. Which is, a, which is a, an important takeaway. I was really pause. excited to see all the <laughs> excitement uh, from the people I talked to who had no clue who we were or what we were doing. Yeah. Right. Seeing somebody walk up to the booth, oh, what's this, a jousting game? And then being able to tell them, yes, and more. <laughs> right. To, to, to tell them what, what we're doing and then have them walk away, you know, with all of our information and excitement and you can see them like, that looks really cool as I walk away. That was, that was yeah. really yeah, it uh, turns out there's not a lot of jousting games <laughs> out there, so it was pretty eye-catching when people would round the corner and see people jousting against one another. We got some some pretty interesting folks who had come come up to our floor from the fourth floor. You would hear them behind you know from behind us in the booth say like a jousting game, <laughs> and that was like my always my cue to turn around and say like actually. What we're really doing is we're creating an MMORPG where we want your skill as a player to actually matter. And this demonstrates that, and I would invite them in to play it. And then saying, like this, but for everything, would just blow people's mind. They're like, how, how am I going, this is not what I'm used to in the idea of an MMORPG. And people are expecting this quest hubs and yep. task lists Dailies. and raids Boy. and all of these things that were not. <clears throat> um, so so having people become engaged because they saw this just thing that they weren't expecting to see on the show floor. They try it, they would enjoy it, 
and then be able to look to the future and see that this applied to everything across the board would make a compelling game that they would want to play. Yeah. Thank you everyone for your time. I appreciate it. We had a lot of awesome conversations. Tune into our YouTube channel, people out there of the internet. Uh, for everyone here at Soulbound Studios, I'm Kaizen. We'll see you next time.